Dentalog Silvery Service has been serving the Dallas dental offices in the Dallas area for 40 years now. Mm -hmm. And um, CAD Dental recently partnered with them. I opened the Austin branch of the original Dental Auxiliary Service um, seven and a half years ago. So I've been staffing dental offices in the Central Texas area, kind of um, this kind of Central Texas Waco, which if some people watch Fixer Upper, that's where the uh, Magnolia you're right, are. You're right, you're right, you're right. The famous <laughs> people. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then we go down towards San Antonio. But um, I'm happy to be here today. Can't wait to tell you guys a little bit about searching for your first job and, you know, kind of things to look out for, things to incorporate in your, into your job search, yeah. tips and tricks, and then answer any questions that you all have. So, mm -hmm. and bear with me, this is my first video webinar. So if I do oh, weird yeah. hand gestures, no, I'm trying no. to keep my hands out of sight so that I'm not doing any weird gestures. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is amazing. Thank you again for willing to try. Of course. Okay, so the next slide is you're looking for your first hygiene job. Mm -hmm. Where to begin? Okay, yeah. so start. So the first thing we're going to talk about is resumes. Mm -hmm. And the entire purpose of a resume is oh, that's a blank page. <laughs> right there. Uh, to help market yourself. Okay. And so your resume is your personal marketing tool and it's okay. so that you can get an interview. That's the mm -hmm. point of a resume is to help you get an interview. Okay. Um, and it can help you. A lot of people do just like black and white resumes, mm -hmm. but CAD dental staffing can help you with any kind of resumes that you want that maybe have color in it or graphics or, okay. you know, anything to kind of spice up the resume along the way. We're more than happy to help you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, a, uh, I'm sorry, CAD is spelled K-A-D, right? CAD, K-A-D, correct. Awesome, awesome. Just wanted to make sure that our listeners and viewers know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, and apparently two of my slides did not print, so I'm going to kind of talk through. Yeah. Um, resume basics, keep it short and sweet. Okay. Um, try to keep it to one page. Most offices won't read mm -hmm. anything past the first page. So one page is ideal. Mm -hmm. um, don't, uh, the, the most common business fonts are Arial, Times New Roman, and okay. Calibria, I Calibri. think. Calibri. 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 Okay, Calibri, yes, you're right. Thanks for even giving. Calibri. All right, let's not go crazy creative here. Let's stick to the business usual. Exactly. If it's okay. cursive, you know, after something gets maybe photocopied or scanned or faxed, it gets really hard to read something that is more of a cursive kind of font. Mm -hmm. um, and you want to try to keep the font size no smaller than an 11. Okay. So uh, you can kind of play around with inserting tables in your mm -hmm. resume to kind of make it Mm -hmm. to kind of move the information and organize it a little bit. Okay. Um, but with your resume, you're going to want to focus on your education, mm -hmm. um, any training that you've received, and any previous job experience, even okay. if it's not in the dental field. I mean, if you've worked in hospitality, mm -hmm. if you've worked in retail, if you've okay. worked in child care, then you know how to interact with mm -hmm. The public, patients, mm -hmm. you know, okay. you know, people who are annoyed or, you know, anxious or, you know, anything that you might see in a dental practice, you will have seen in previous work experience. So definitely mm -hmm. take into account any of those types of job experiences has value. Okay. All right. I got it. Yeah. All right, so yeah. uh, one thing you really you mentioned that I really want to point out is that you can put any retail experience and things like that because as a new grad, you don't have much going on, right? So like we've been 20 years in the career and I uh, work for Perio and this and that. But all of that is relevant, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. No, any, any of that's relevant, you know, any kind of volunteering that you've done, but anything where you've interacted with, you know, mm -hmm. the greater population, you know, okay. customer service, anything like that. I mean, that's okay. all a part of dentistry. All right. So one page. So we got that resume and that was for, to get an interv uh, to get an interview. Yeah. That's the goal. Perfect. Exactly. It's your marketing. Mm -hmm. That's your marketing. 
Okay. You're marketing yourself with your resume. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I'm back to where my slides are. Mm -hmm. Things to avoid. Ooh, so, all, right. So, all right. So a couple of things. So you really want to make sure that you're showing your professional side. You okay. know, there's definitely the personal side to everybody's life, but the resume should focus on the professional. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, minimize personal information like marital status, mm -hmm. number and ages of children, even in your cover letter, don't mention right. those things, mm -hmm. um, social or religious affiliations, mm -hmm. clubs or hobbies, and any age or birth date information. And it's a good idea to leave any high school graduation year off because people okay. can do the math and figure out how old you are now. Oh. And you're always going to introduce the implicit bias, huh. you're, you know. As far as um, okay, you know, as far as relating to marital status, children or age, there okay. is there could be an implicit bias. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so good point. Can I ask you one thing about that? Then, when you write your resume, you said don't put when you graduated high school, but let's say it was like in 2015. That I don't say I graduated in 2015 high school. No, I oh, wouldn't. I mean, once okay. you're finished with your hygiene program, when mm -hmm. you graduated high school. It matters the fact that you did matter okay but when it doesn't matter all right thanks awesome awesome tip yeah. mm -hmm. um now some of those types of personal information or personal types of uh questions they may come up in the interview like okay. people are just trying to get to know you yes um yeah. trying to figure out like who you are as a person and mm -hmm. so those questions are going to kind of come up okay and the best thing i can say is to redirect the conversation back okay. again to the professional aspect oh, okay. um, you can you can answer answer a question briefly like you know are you married do you have kids answer it briefly but then turn it back to mm -hmm. you know the great thing about me is no matter mm -hmm. what's going on in my life i give 100 percent to my job amazing okay love it so, so that's, mm -hmm. you know, it's perfectly acceptable to express your personal side. Mm -hmm. But again, the focus of the resume in the interview is to highlight your professional side. Okay. Oh, I love it so much. Yeah. Great. So focus on the professional. Mm -hmm. So that's some things to avoid with your resume. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any questions so far? That will give me one second. Um, sure. You Okay. All right. I think she had a question, but uh, can you please type in your question? There's a chat function, and that would be the best um, thing to do if you have a question. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Audra. Thanks. Yeah. Of course. Okay, <clears throat> so again, the resume, marketing mm -hmm. yourself. All your right. goals are to prevent, present yourself professionally, mm -hmm. smile and speak mm -hmm. with confidence, mm -hmm. and then do a polite handshake or greeting. Okay. Um, it only takes a few seconds to make first impression and so many first impressions are nonverbal. Mm -hmm. So you want to definitely make sure that you're maintaining eye contact. Okay. Eye contact is key. If you are not looking somebody in the eye, they're gonna mm -hmm. you present as unsure of yourself, okay. you know, not having the confidence to do the job. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and it shows that you've got professionalism, that you have mm -hmm. confidence if you're mm -hmm. able to maintain eye contact uh, with your inner mm -hmm. all right. Perfect. So make eye contact, um, be confident. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the next thing we're going to talk about is the greeting. Ooh, so okay. as far as the greeting, you know, kind of with the changing, you know, the shifts in the way that work culture is now, mm -hmm. sometimes touching somebody is appropriate. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of gauge the person's body um, language on whether or not a handshake is going to make them uncomfortable or if you just want to smile at somebody and make eye contact and okay. that's the greeting that you should use instead of mm. handshake. So just okay. you're going to have to kind of read a situation a little bit on that. <laughs> okay. So not everybody needs a so, handshake. I mean, it depends. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> But you know, I, I, I would say that, you know, if you're, if you're a new grad, I mean, one of the things, I mean, we are very shy in the beginning, you know, we know we don't have much experience, just in general, whether it's dentistry or, you know, social experience. And, you know, what do you think of just a new grad saying hi, and just like giving, trying to like give a handshake? Do you think that's okay, like to show confidence and being engaged, saying like, I'm here today, versus like, hi? I think 
I think that depending again on kind of the body language and mm. how the interviewer is interacting with you, I would maybe wait for the interviewer to extend okay. their hand. Okay. You know, okay. maybe wait to see what that person's comfort level is as far as personal okay. contact. All right. All right. Good advice. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, because some people, you know, really prefer to not have personal contact. Some people, you know, they might only want to operate in a sterile environment. They don't want okay. to shake your hand. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that, that's another thing. You know, there could be some other reasons why they don't want to shake your hand, and that is fine, as long as you do a great interview. Exactly, exactly. Okay, perfect. So, um, and then the next thing we're going to talk about is potential disqualifiers. Okay. So, any sort of visible tattoos or multiple piercings or kind of, you know, maybe unusual piercings, um, mm -hmm. Unprofessional clothing, mm -hmm. for me, I would always recommend any face-to-face -face interview, go in scrubs, wear scrubs, um, mm -hmm. or you can find out, if, yeah, that way they can maybe, they can, vis they can visualize you in the office. You know, this is what you would look like today. I would love to talk about it for a second here, because I heard many things about, do I wear a suit? I mean, do I wear semi-casual, business casual, whatever that means, you know? Um, and I also heard don't wear scrubs, but right, right now what you're saying is scrubs is actually fine because it helps them understand that this is the environment you're going to work in. They can picture you being there. Right. I see. They I can see. picture you in the office in your scrubs. You're going to uh -huh. sh you're showing them what you're going to look like on, on day one. Okay. Okay. And this comes from I you, you know, helping a lot of people out there getting recruited placing, you know, or mm -hmm. not just dental hygienists, but other dental professionals out there. Okay. Thank you so much for exactly. the talk. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, but again, a lot, some of that really, um, you know, as far as like the tattoos and the piercings, some of that varies by the job market and the region. Right. In Austin, I mean, the, the slogan for Austin, Texas is keep Austin weird. You know, we've got people, we, I've, I've gone into dental offices and people will have a full sleeve of tattoos and nobody okay. bats an eye. They'll have okay. a nose ring or, you know, a lip ring. Nobody bats an eye. Okay. That won't necessarily work in some other towns okay. in Texas. Awesome. awesome. So it really does kind of depend on mm -hmm. um, your region. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. a lot. But that's going to depend on the range. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is you can look on most dental offices are on Facebook now or have a social media page. And so mm -hmm. you can get on their social media page and see what do they look like. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. what does the team look like? Mm -hmm. I mean, just like you would do on a date or, I mean, before you go to on a date something, you, you would do that search. So this is even more important. Make sure you understand who's working, what they're um, degrees are where they're from so you can find something to connect exactly mm -hmm. exactly right. exactly so um, you know some of the other things you know check your social media accounts yeah. make sure that there aren't you know maybe some again you want to project your professional side mm -hmm. so you want to you know definitely feel like you can express your personal side mm -hmm. but maybe change your Facebook account to private Okay. or change your Facebook page to your first name and your middle name so okay. that, because I can promise you they're going to, they're going to Google. They're okay. going to look for you on, on I social see. media. They're going to look for you on, they're going to do a Google search. Okay. And I like that option of actually making it private. You know, that does not mean you don't want to be out there. It just means that you're making your life close you know, just to, to people who are around you. And I actually like that because okay. sometimes patient also can search you. Is that the best idea? You know, Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. If you start to get really, if your patients feel very comfortable with you, they might try to reach out to you on social right. media, and that could be, mm -hmm. you know, definitely a little. Yeah, that's another little issue. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, All right. Exactly. Um, so again, you, you know, we want to focus on the professional side, and not, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and go through your professional goals. Make sure mm -hmm. that those are represented. Mm -hmm. you know, while maintaining your personal life, but maybe mm -hmm. make that more private because you're okay. about to be out in the public sector a little bit. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to talk a little bit about resources for job searches. Yeah, I know. Again, That's like one of the 
biggest question I get, you know, from our new grads that use mm -hmm. Tutor in RGH, and you know, sometimes they don't even use Tutor in RGH, and so that is completely fine. I'll be happy to give them resources, but it is like, where do I search? Is it Craigslist? Do I look on, you know, some JAWS posting sites it's like Indeed? Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. It's everywhere. So here's my list of resources. Ooh, okay. We got local hygiene association, dental association, schools, staffing agencies, dental consulting firms, area dental sales representative, online job boards, LinkedIn, and the last one, Audra, is at the very bottom. Um, in person visit. Oh, okay. Let's talk about those. Yeah. It's it's perfectly fine. So your local dental hygiene society, your local dental association, those are gold mines. Those are gold mines. Um, the hygiene society is going to know, you know, who, you know, which dentist is going to maybe ask you to stay late or work through lunch, or which dentist is going to be very supportive of their hygiene department. I they see. know all of those little inside tips and tricks mm -hmm. um, from just interacting with the hygienists in the marketplace. I love it. Yeah. So can we yeah. just like contact them, email them saying, hey, I'm a new grad, can you help me out? Or do you have any area in your website that I can look, you know, just be proactive, right? And they might not have on the exactly. website an area for job posting, but it doesn't hurt to contact them. And maybe they know something about something, <laughs> you know, it's all about- well, Somebody, you know, one of their members might have said, hey, you know, you know, my spouse got a job in a different city. I'm going to have to leave in a couple right. of months. So I need mm -hmm. to start looking for a job or you know, yeah. anything like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, 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 or, you know, my office is going to need to hire another team member in the next yeah. three to four months. So right. we need to start looking for uh, okay. a new hire. So, I mean, just those conversations that happen at the hygiene meetings, a lot a lot of the hygiene societies have Facebook pages, and I have actually seen jobs posted on those Facebook pages. Right. So it's not a bad idea to reach out to the hygiene association and say, "Hey, I'm a mm -hmm. new grad. You know, attend the meetings, meet your fellow hygienists. I mean, it's great to have that support system in place anyway with the hygiene societies and the okay. local components of your um, mm -hmm. of your state and national hygiene mm -hmm. association. Okay, yeah. Um, the dental associations, the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. um, again, you just never know who's going to know who, who's going to know who. The dental communities, no matter the size of the cities, dental mm -hmm. communities are actually pretty small. Okay. So, you know, you know, even if the dentist you're speaking to may not be hiring, they may know somebody who is. Okay. So it's always good to keep in mind that kind mm -hmm. of word of mouth and organic okay. marketing of yourself as a professional yeah. may not necessarily with the person you're speaking to, okay. but they're going to know somebody. Who okay. knows somebody? It's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. um, there's that old commercial from the '70s. I think it was a shampoo commercial, and it was like, mm -hmm. and she told her friend, and so on, and so on, and so on. It was a cheesy shampoo commercial. Okay. Um, the hygiene schools are a great place too, especially if somebody's relocating from where they're currently studying. Um, or graduating from, you know, if somebody is, uh, you know, in Texas, if somebody's living in the Austin area, but moving up to the Dallas area, we encourage them to get in touch with the Dallas hygiene schools. Okay. And because a lot of times offices into hire will contact the schools directly. I see. All right. So let's be proactive. Mm -hmm. I mean, we already have three and that's already three more than usually what I see new grads doing, which is, you know, Indeed or some, you mm -hmm. know, Googling platforms. So this is just contacted directly to associations. And I love it just because, mm -hmm. you know, in my case too, you know, I do hire sometimes a student RDH and the brands that I have. Mm -hmm. And I love it when they're proactive. Mm -hmm. They, they email me, they email me yeah, the resume sure. saying, I can do this and that. Do you know, do you have something? If not, do you know someone? And just having that email sure. just gives me so much more confidence that this person is proactive and wants this job versus, you know, asking, oh, do you have a place where I look at things? You know, I like it when they like a little bit more pushy and saying, here it is. Mm -hmm. And can you help me out? Mm -hmm. Awesome. For sure. And people love people, people never mind. I, I have never met a person who says somebody asked for my help and I told them no. 
<laughs> people love helping other people. You know, right. I mean, it's just part of who we are as humans. Yeah. We love being a resource. Mm -hmm. You know, people just don't think to ask. Yeah, yeah. Okay. People don't think to ask.